In this video, I'm comparing one of the most popular tropical destinations in the world, the Maldives, with an exclusive place in India that's actually in the same atoll as the Maldives, Lakshadweep. So if you want to know which one is better for you and what the distinctions are, make sure to keep on watching until the end. Hi, my name is Ivana and I have been living in Bangalore now for three and a half years. Just recently, I had the absolute privilege to visit a beautiful conservation area right here in India called Lakshadweep. Now Lakshadweep is actually part of the same atoll as the Maldives and the Maldives of course are super super famous so I thought it would be super interesting to make a comparison video where we look at what Lakshadweep has to offer and what Maldives have to offer. First of all I'm going to look at of course the logistics, the accommodation, then the natural beauty, the food, the activities that you can do there, and finally, of course, the culture. At the end, I'm going to give an overall conclusion of what I think about the Maldives versus Lakshadweep. So make sure to keep on watching until the end. This is part three in the Lakshadweep series. So if you're already more interested in all the basics on how to travel to Lakshadweep and what the most amazing experience over there was, I've linked part 1 and 2 of this series for you in the description below. Meet my friend Kritika Gol, who is also a travel vlogger. You can find more videos on Luxury on her channel linked in the description below. Let's get into it and start with the first point in the accommodation. The biggest difference that I have seen between Luxury and the Maldives is that the Maldives actually has multiple layers of the luxury levels in accommodation. In Lakshadweep, this is pretty much leveled. You have really nice, comfortable rooms with all the amenities that you would need in a beautiful tropical paradise like Lakshadweep. But if you want to upgrade, even in a suite, for instance, there is no option of an overwater villa or even actually a beachfront facing uh, villa from what I've seen that is available in the Maldives. In the Maldives, I also feel the rates vary also more. If you go to a local island, which is like the most budget budget option the cheapest room starts at uh, 4000 5000 rupees and of course with the overwater villas the rooms can go up to 1 lakh 2 lakh i mean until infinity per night in contrast to that in lakshadweep the prices i feel are a lot more leveled so for instance for the regular little for the regular room with all the amenities for double occupancy now you would pay 10,000 rupees per night, which actually already went up because it was 8,000 rupees the last time that I was there. And because it is getting more and more crowded and the occupancy is very, very limited because it is a conservation area, obviously the prices go up. Next to staying on an island, however, in Lakshadweep, you have the option to go on the Samudra cruise boat. And there also the prices have been raised from the last time that I was there. Five days on a cruise visiting three islands, four nights, double occupancy, and such a beautiful conservation area, paradise, crazy value for money. So I would say in that sense, Lakshadweep has that you know, benefit where you can do that cruise, where I haven't seen those options much in the Maldives. In the Maldives, you usually book a room and you stay on one island or on a on a villa. Hmm, I actually started with accommodation, but I should have started with logistics. Please bear with me. Let's just get on with the logistics, how to reach the places where you want to be in both Lakshadweep and in the Maldives. How do those compare with each other? Well, they're kind of equal, I would say, because in order to get around in Lakshadweep, you will always have to fly to Agati Airport. That is the central airport for Lakshadweep. And the same goes for the Maldives, but then it is the island Male. You will always have to fly into Male, Male. <laughs> Sorry, that's my Dutch accent coming up. And then from Mali, you will either have to take a ferry or even a seaplane. <laughs> in Lakshadweep, however, there are no seaplanes. You will always have to take a boat or if the weather is bad, there is actually a helicopter, but mostly it will just be the boat. In terms of costs, 
from Kochi Airport, you can fly to both destinations. The set price usually for uh, flying to Agati from Kochi will be about 6,000 rupees. And to Male, which is the Maldives airport, that will be the lowest price, 13,000 rupees. Kritika and me both paid also for a ticket from our respective airports to reach Kochi Airport. So for me, for instance, to reach Kochi Airport from Bangalore Airport, last minute was 7,500 rupees because it was a return flight. So in total, my ticket to Lakshadweep in terms of flights cost me, what is it, 13,500 rupees. And I, I would have been flying to the Maldives, Malay, um, probably there should be straight flights from Bangalore. I'm not sure. I'm going to look it up and I'm going to put it here if there are actually any um, like direct flights. Getting around on the islands in Maldives, I think you have a little bit more options. There is a local ferry which may have started by now, which only costs $4. That's crazy. And there are also some private ferries which will cost you, I think, $40 for a one-way trip. In Lakshadweep, you will get a return ticket on a boat from Agati Airport to Bangaram Island for 6,000 rupees. So that's actually $80 and it's kind of the same with the Maldives. So in that sense, they don't, there, there's not that much of a difference, I would say. Unless you're taking the Samudra cruise boat in Lakshadweep, which means that you will actually be boarding the cruise from Agati Airport directly, which will be taking you to all of the islands. And then you eliminate the boat ride costs, which obviously is a cheaper option than, you know, having to pay for that separately. Looking at the overall logistics, the flight tickets would be the only main difference, I feel, which also makes sense, right? Because you're actually, if you're flying from India, you're actually flying out of the country. So obviously that will always be a little bit more expensive than flying domestic, right? Let's get into the next comparison point, something that I've actually been looking forward to, which is the natural beauty. Now, I have been obsessed with the Maldives ever since I saw the first sandbank on Instagram. I think it's just so, so surreal to be somewhere in the middle of an ocean, surrounded by beautiful crystal clear water with all the shades of turquoise and blue and green. And I've seen a sandbank in the Philippines actually, but it wasn't great weather, so it didn't look like Instagram at all. And in Lakshadweep, I mean, I mean, look at this yourself. Admittedly, in Lakshadweep, only Bangaram Island has a sandbank which becomes accessible late in the afternoon. Is it as good as a Maldives sandbank that I've seen on Instagram? Let's find out. You're moving just like you own the room. Make it look easy. A beautiful sandbank in the middle of turquoise blue water. This is not the Maldives, this is India. Can you believe it? This is India right here in Lakshadweep. Look at this gorgeousness. <gasps> Look at this, it's insane. It's a funny situation that I got myself into. I can help my own frustration. I think I like it. I think I like it. Got nothing to lose. Mm -hmm. Cause I think I like it. Tell me if I like it too. I'm about to cry like this is so beautiful as you can see it is a super gloomy day can you imagine if this is already so beautiful 
how beautiful this is on a sunny day. I can. I absolutely can't get over this. It's too beautiful. Walking out on the sandbank, my friend Kritika and me are just stunned. We both have never witnessed anything like this in our life. It's really fascinating how you get sucked into a moment when your mind experiences such tremendous beauty. All you can do is witness it. Take it all in and feel absolutely tiny, basking in the glory of Mother Nature's wonders. So are you happy now? Things just got so crazy from a simple maybe. It was a long way down. I just feel so heavy without you. Everything we were was just so pretty. Okay, okay, this is gorgeous, right? So you think, hmm, can it possibly get any more perfect? Yes, yes it can. Watch this. can't get enough of that sandbank so we are going back and the sun is out so hopefully today will be an amazing sunset so you do have to get a bit lucky with the sunset but even on a bit gloomier day like this the sandbank is magical we even got to see bioluminescence which is basically nature's glow-in-the-dark organisms you touch my soul like a phantom And you did it right from the start The start look at the overall natural beauty and compare them i mean Lakshadweep is part of the same atoll as the maldives i don't think you're compromising if you're going to Lakshadweep instead of the maldives in contrast actually because it is a conservation area and because access is so limited i actually feel that the natural beauty in Lakshadweep is just more exclusive and one of the biggest examples that I want to show you are the beautiful turtles that Kritika and me got to see. Moving on to the next comparison point, which is the food. Obviously, Lakshadweep is part of India. It is a special territory and the food that will be served there is quite limited, but it is such freaking delicious, almost home cooked Indian food, like Garka Khana. That's, that's how we call it here in India. It's the food that an Indian mom would make you at home. It is so healthy and delicious. I can honestly tell you the buffet spread is very limited for lunch, dinner, and breakfast. However, the food that you get is so satisfying and so soul filling that I never in those five days there felt like, oh, I'm so bored with this. I wanna eat a pasta or, 
you know, I, I want to have a pizza or something like that. Nothing like that at all. I actually feel is a, is a plus for Lakshadweep because as a huge Indian food fan, that is the type of food that I really, really like. Actually, even on vacations, because if I eat too much pasta and pizza, my stomach gets upset. And if I eat that kind of healthy, light, home-cooked food with a lot of vegetables, my stomach really, really likes that. From the food options that I've seen in the Maldives, oh my gosh, it, it, it's insane. You can get anything there. And they also grow their own fruits. So you can get like a whole buffet of fruits during the breakfast from what I've seen. That obviously, obviously looks amazing. So I think if you really, really love Garkakana Indian home cooked food, then Lakshadweep is ideal for you. And if you want more food options or if you're a super, super picky eater, then the Maldives would be a better option for you. Almost the last comparison point, I'm going to discuss activities first and then I'm going to move on to culture. In terms of activities, I think from what I've seen, both places offer so much water sports it is incredible you can go kayaking in both places even though the prices are very different from what i've seen kayaking for an hour in the maldives will cost you 22 dollars whereas in lakshadweep it will be 150 rupees mm -hmm. that's right so that that's quite of a price difference right then well I have done my research very scientifically on a brown envelope. You can see it here. Then actually diving in Lakshadweep, you can get your deep water, no, not deep, open water paddy certified for 20,000 rupees. That is one of the cheapest paddy open water courses that I've seen in the world. I have done my paddy open water in the Pahenchen Islands in Malaysia, which is also one of the cheapest and most beautiful locations in the world to get your open water certificate. And I think back then I paid $230 for five days and this is five to seven days an open water dive will cost you 3500 rupees which i think is quite a normal a normal price an introduction dive discover scuba for 30 minutes will cost you 2800 rupees which is 37 dollars and 68 cents in the maldives this will cost you discover scuba 95 dollars for two to three hours so it's it's kind of the same price right but i think the discover no not discover the open water paddy course in lakshadweep is one of the most cheapest in the world and there's so much coral there's so much natural beauty under the water as well we also went diving let me just show you what it looks like right we are going scuba diving it's actually an introduction dive which only lasts for 30 minutes and can be done with people who are also not yet certified i am certified but i haven't dived in five years so i'm very very happy to just do an introduction dive maybe next time i'll come back and i'll do a proper proper dive because for that you also need like a one hour refreshment course but right now i'm just feeling comfortable with the introduction dive and i can show you guys also if you're not certified that you can still go diving here the marine life is actually one of the best in the world so i am extremely excited to see that like I mentioned, I haven't dived in five years and it's just so, so good to be near the ocean again and also to see the underwater flora and fauna, guys. This is the diving suit, as you can see here. Just putting it on. Kritika is also changing. Oh man, long hair. <laughs> it's not the best thing when you're going diving. Ooh, okay, ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> Got it, got it. Oh, okay. This diving suit is quite comfortable usually. Well, sometimes they can be super, super tight. But this is right. Well, what a new. I was putting it on the wrong way. So, Kritika, hello. Thank you for correcting me. I'm not sure this is the right way. But yeah, let's I think just it is. roll with this. I think it is, to be honest, because from what I remember, you always needed help yeah, from to someone like, to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close your Sorry, diving suit. Here, yeah. Who doesn't know how to put those? It's been five years. <laughs> but I'm happy I have an expert with me. <laughs> okay, wait, this is stuck. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, got it. 
Yeah. Oh, cool. Awesome. It is never cool. <laughs> I need to stick yours as well. Yeah. Okay. Hip bump. <laughs> All set to go dive. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. That was really cool. We saw Nemo! And thank you so much for helping me out. I had some trouble with my buoyancy. Um, I was very scared to touch the coral because yeah. I really, really don't want to destroy Normally, any nature. you don't want to take the coral. No, no. It's really bad. So I, I'm just so scared to touch the coral. But thank you so much for helping me out with my buoyancy and seeing so many cool things. <laughs> Small disclaimer, I have never been to the Maldives, but of course, as travel is my passion and actually also my work, of course, I have done my research. Concluding, I think in both places, you will never get bored because there are so many water sport activities. I do think that Luxury is more exclusive, so you won't have that many people doing certain things with you, which means that you will have much more natural beauty and and the ocean and those kind of things for yourself and also i think the prices are definitely 20 to 30 percent lower in luxury so in that sense you can also save some money by going there obviously there is a restriction because you do need a permit to go to luxury however this can easily easily be sorted by arranging it through the tour organizer that kritika and i were with in luxury their name is Go Luxury, 1010 can recommend them. The easiest way to book with them is through this WhatsApp number. I'll link the details also down in the description below. They also arrange for the Samudra cruise. So yeah, in that sense, yes, a permit for Luxury can be intimidating because you don't need a permit to go to the Maldives. But in that sense, I also feel Luxury is more exclusive and you will experience things a little bit more for yourself instead of you know having a mass of tourists in around you like for instance in the maldives that's just not possible with luxury because the access is restricted it is a conservation area so it can never be overrun by tourism the way things are going right now this also brings me to my last point which is the culture of the places obviously if you go to luxury it is india there are a lot of indian people the food that is served is indian the diving instructors are indian 
everything is Indian. If you love India, like me, it is a freaking paradise and, and it's just amazing having everything desi around you. Now, if you go to the Maldives, obviously the Maldives also has their own culture. They even have their own language. But from what I have seen, if I'm being very honest, is that tourism is very, very segregated from the traditional Maldivian culture. And the only way to break this barrier is to actually go to a local island and interact with the locals yourself. Because if you go to the regular tourist resort, it, it's just too segregated to get, you know, to get a real taste of Maldivian culture, which obviously is a shame because I feel every country's culture should be respected. And it's always fun if you're visiting a new place to get introduced to new concepts and new perspectives on life by experiencing a new culture. So that is something that I haven't really seen from my research into the Maldives. Of course, if you have been to the Maldives and have experienced Maldivian culture, let me know down in the description below how to do that. Because for me, it just seems very, very segregated. And in luxury, if you're just immersed into everything Desi in the best possible way, I have to say, because normally India is quite conservative in terms of, you know, bathing uh, suits and those kind of things. But in Lakshadweep, it's like Goa or Varkala or something like that. Usually when you go to like real beach, beach places in India, it's not that conservative. You can just be yourself, wear a bathing suit. Nobody will be looking at you. Nobody cares. So that I also experienced in luxury. If people have any kind of concerns about, you know, India being a conservative culture and how does that work with swimsuits and bathing suits, no issues at all in, in luxury. And in the Maldives, I have heard that it is only restricted to the tourism resorts. And for instance, if you go to a public beach, you can't wear a bathing suit or a swimsuit. It's it's not allowed by law. There are bikini beaches. There you can wear it, but it, for instance, if I compare that with the Mal uh, with the Maldives with the Lakshadweep, there are no restrictions there on what kind of you know swimwear you can wear. The only restriction is that you can't go nude, which I think is fair to be honest. My overall conclusion in comparing both places is that Lakshadweep is more exclusive and more protected from tourism right now. So it is a special place if you want to go there and it doesn't have to be difficult. Like I mentioned before, you can just go with go Lakshadweep and they will arrange everything for you. It is super, super Indian and I have just completely falling in love with the beauty of this place because it is all my dreams about a tropical paradise coming true. And of course, the Maldives is gorgeous. If you have a lot of requirements, like for instance, in terms of food or in terms of accommodation, then the Maldives is definitely a better option for you. You will find more luxury resorts there over water villas, you know, large buffet spreads, those kind of things. But obviously that will also cost you significantly more than you know, having the same natural beauty, for instance, in luxury. So I think it just depends on your personal preferences. What kind of person are you? Now, of course, I would also like to hear your opinion. Have you been to luxury? Have you been to the Maldives? What have been your experiences in these places? And of course, should I also visit the Maldives after having been to luxury? Let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you have any tips or hacks for you know saving money for instance on flight tickets those kind of things let me know i'm always very curious to learn from you guys if you enjoyed this video you can put a thumbs up and you can also consider subscribing to my channel and joining 247,000 subscribers. We're almost at 250,000. It's free and you'll get a notification whenever I post a new video for now thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time bye